everyone and welcome to this webinar. Thank you for your participation. I am Alba Kecha, the Portfolio Manager for Risk and Management at PECB. I'm delighted to welcome you all in a topic of seven risk treatment options based on ISO 31000. Whatever we do or we do not is used, uh, is based on a decision. Risk decisions in any aspect of our business relationship, even outside of it, should be guided by an adequate and informed risk treatment options. Therefore, the webinar will discuss the definition and seven options of risk treatment, concluding with risk treatments dealing with negative consequences. Now, uh, I would like to introduce you today's speaker, Mr. Mande Utoman, a PCB certified trainer and ISO 31000 lead risk manager. He has over 10 years professional experience in managing risk, working in both public and private organizations. Please be informed that you can ask your questions at any time during the webinar by writing them in the chat box of your control panel. We will try to answer all of your questions during question and answer session. I will now turn the time to Mr. Monday. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the session. Okay, good day everyone, depending on the country which you are in. Uh, once again, you are welcome to this webinar, um, risk treatment option based on ISO 31000. I'm sure we are all familiar with uh, risk management standard, which is the ISO 31000, uh, which actually defines risk as the effect which actually defined risk as the effect of uncertainty on your objectives. Now, the purpose of this webinar is not to consider the uh, risk assessment process, it's not to consider the definitions of the principles of risk management, but uh, it's to go straight to look at the risk treatment options. Now, whatever we do or don't do is based on the decision risk decision in any aspect of our business relationship, even outside of it, should be guided by an adequate and informed risk treatment option. When you go through the risk management process, having done the risk identification, you've done the risk analysis, you've done the risk evaluation, the next option is to treat or to modify the risk. Now, if we treat every other thing that has to do with our health, why not risk? That, that is a question I want every participant, every attendee to think about. Now, the, the human body can suffer from various ailments, and most of whom we go to the pharmacy or we go to the clinic to have a diagnosis conducted, and then we are giving recommendation on some drugs that we need to take. So, so also the organization you are working for. Part of your responsibility as the risk manager or as the risk officer or as the person who is in charge of risk is to treat the organization when it comes to risk, when it comes to uncertainties that will affect the organization's objectives. So what we will focus on in this webinar are the seven risk treatment options identified in the ISO standard, ISO 31000. Now, these treatment options are not, uh, are not the entire spectrum of risk treatment, but basically they, they are fundamental to any option that you decide to choose. The ISO standard on risk management defines risk treatment as the process to modify risk now, this definition is very significant. What you intend to do when you decide to treat a particular risk is to modify it. Now, modification means to change, to change uh, the look and the feel of the risk, to change the frequency, to change the likelihood, to change the impact. So, anything that you carry out that will modify the risk have to see as a risk treatment. Once a risk has been identified, a decision needs to be made about such risk, which would involve any of the following seven risk treatment options. We will pause here and consider this. Now, the first step 
in the risk management process is to have that risk identified. Now, if you've done your risk identification, now your, your company or your organization will be vulnerable to different type of risk. Some are business risk, some are liquidity risk, some are operational risk, some are credit risk, some are strategic risk, some are environmental and health risk. So it, it depends on the risk which you, are, which you have identified. But any of this risk can be treated. That is the good news. If you know the risk, then you can actually make some proposal on how the risk will be treated. Now, what are the options? What are these options of risk treatment? We'll look at option number one. Avoid the risk. Avoid the risk by deciding not to start or continue with the activity that gives rise to the risk. Now, this looks very simple when, when you look at it theoretically, avoid the risk. But avoiding the risk could be very expensive. For instance, in the ISO 27000, which is information security, considering if you are an IT firm that is into online real time 24 hours, you have a business running on the web, in which customers need to assess you every second, every hour, every day, 24 hours in a day. Now, you cannot afford to be done for one hour. You cannot afford to have a down time of one hour. So for you to avoid that risk, you need to create an orderly system, a complete, a complete redundant failover in which any incident the alternate system comes up immediately. It's like having an automatic power switch over. That if there is failure from the power grid, the generator comes on automatically. Now, the cost of avoiding the risk can be very expensive because you may need to buy equipment which you are not using currently. You may need to have a facility on the ground. So avoiding the risk is not just uh, uh, walking away from the premises is about having facilities and procedures in place in which the failure of your current processing or system will not be noticed. So avoid the risk by deciding not to start or continue with the activity that gives rise to the risk can also mean not participating in that risk activity. For instance, you, 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 you intend to set up a new business in a different country, and, and the economic climate will not be favorable to your business expansion. So the, the best thing in that action, I would identify the risk that the climate is tense, the political climate is tense, there, there is terrorism, there is war, uh, there is uh, uh, hostility from the indigenous. Now, you identify those risks in the new business environment which you are considering is setting up, and you've considered your resources and your capacity and discovered that you are not able to run your business objectives within that community, within that state, then the best risk treatment option is to avoid the risk. Avoid setting up your business or expanding into that new territory. Avoiding the risk will also mean not going into a new market area. Avoiding the risk will also mean not engaging in new technologies. For, for instance, you, your organization want to upgrade to new technology. It will involve the cost of training the staff so that they can get to learn the new technologies. It will involve changing a lot of key infrastructures. It may involve hiring new personnel. So the effect of the uncertainty of, of the effect of the uncertainty on the objectives of the company need to be weighed against the capacity of that company. So our first risk treatment option is to avoid the risk. Avoid the risk by deciding not to start. That is where the fundamental is. Then the second option which is take on more risk. 
Now, if we are talking about option one, avoid the risk. And here is option two, saying take on more risk. Take on more risk in order to pursue or take advantage of an opportunity. Now, for, for, for those in the insurance company, if you work in an insurance firm, you will definitely know that the only way your company can survive among its competition is to take on more risk. Because the more risk you take, the more the chances of making a profit. So when it comes to treating a risk, there are circumstances that you need to assume more risk. For instance, when it comes to investment, you, you may need to invest more in, 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 a, in a riskier venture, in a riskier venture in order to have a higher reward. You, you may need to expand your business to other geographical locations in order to reap the economies of scale. So the most important thing is that you need to understand your capacity, your resources, your resilience. They are very key to making any risk treatment option. So for your organization or you as a risk manager, before you uh, 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 treat a risk, you need to look at the entire spectrum. Whether your company will be able to achieve its objective if you take on more risk. So you, to take advantage of opportunity or some economic situations, you need to assume more risk in order for that risk to be modified. If you're following so far, we are looking at the risk treatment options based on ISO, ISO 31000, the risk management treatment option. Option one, we said avoid the risk. Option two, take on more risk. Option three, remove the risk source. As you can see from the diagram, this is a desert with scorpions on it. That for you to navigate and establish fully, there are some risk that need risk source that need to be removed. For instance, if you if you if you have a warehouse and you don't have a good housekeeping, the tendency for the warehouse to be caught in an inferno or a fire will be very high. But if you have good housekeeping, all the paper papers are removed from the floor, everything is cut in the drawers or in a fireproof cabinet, then every electricity is an internal conduit, you know, everything, uh, every source that will lead to fire has been taken care of, then you have succeeded in modifying the risk. So by removing the risk source, a risk can be modified to the desired level. At times, it is, uh, it is uh, almost impossible to completely eliminate risk. That's why we use the word modify. Modify means you are bringing the risk to an acceptable level. It, it doesn't mean that the risk has been completely eliminated. So when you remove the risk source, you've only brought the risk to an acceptable level. Okay, it is like... Uh, 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 in the workplace, uh, in terms of uh, operational risk issues, that there is one employee that is constantly causing the entire workforce to be redundant. That if that employee is fired, is sacked, if that employee is laid off, you, you may get a change of attitude from the other employee. So what you did was to remove the resource the source of the redundant nature or the lazy nature or the lay about nature of the other of the entire workforce. So by removing the risk source, you actually modify the risk. Option four. In option four, we'll talk about change the probability. Now risk is equal to probability which is the frequency times the impact. 
altering or changing the likelihood would be the best risk treatment option. It is like you you're going on a wrong, you're going on a journey, and midway you discover that the route you are in is not leading to your destination. Then you you decide to change the course. So changing the probability is actually altering the frequency in which the the, the risk event would occur. So one of the way you, you modify the risk is to change the frequency. For, for instance, if, if the likelihood of employees leaving the organization is 6 out of 10, you can only change the likelihood. How do you do that? Maybe by creating a better compensation pay, by, by creating a work-life balance, or, or by improving on interpersonal relationship. Then instead of 6 employees leaving out of 10, in a year, it has been reduced to two employees living out of 10 in a year. The frequency or the probability of an employee living has been reduced from six to two. Now, how did that happen? You change some certain circumstances. So also, when you identify a risk, and if you're not able to completely eliminate that risk, you should be able to change the frequency. You should be able to change the, the framework within which the risk occurs. So for a risk treatment option that has to do with the change of probability or the change of the frequency of the risk, the, the focus is on changing the numbers of occurrence of that risk. If you can reduce the frequency, you can reduce the likelihood, there is a tendency that it impact will also reduce. So I, I need you to think carefully, think carefully about your organization. What are those risks you have been trying to eliminate instead of reducing the frequency? So you need to focus on reducing the frequency of the risk. Risk treatment option five, alter the consequences. Alter the consequences. Altering the outcome or changing the consequences of an event can modify the risk. Altering the consequences or altering the outcome of, or changing the consequences of an event can modify the risk. In option four, we spoke about modifying the likelihood. Now in option five, we're talking about modifying the impact, the outcome, the consequences. Now, for, for instance, uh, uh, if, if, if there was going to be a fire in your business premises and, and the entire structure is going to be damaged or leveled, you know, the, the impact in the entire building is worth uh, uh, $10 million. So the, the consequence of that fire would be $10 million. Now, what if you install uh, a sprinkler system? What if you have fire extinguishers in every floor of the building and in every office of the building? Now, what if you have firemen, fire servicemen located within the premises? Now, if a fire occurs, the, the consequence will be reduced because the sprinkler system will come up, the, the, the fire alarm will set, the, the smoke detector will, will come up, the, the firemen we immediately come on duty to put out the fire. Now, instead of having a $10 million loss, you've reduced it to $500,000. So basically, you can alter the consequences of a risk by changing it, by creating a different kind of scenario, a different kind of circumstances. And even if the risk occurs, the consequences will be reduced because you've succeeded in modifying the of that risk. So each a positive deal when you are able to modify the impact of the risk. And don't forget, risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. These uncertainties can occur at any time 
So you need to put risk treatment options in place that will either make you avoid the risk, modify the risk, alter the probability, or remove the risk source. In option six, share the risk. It is not every risk that you can avoid. It is not every risk that you can reduce the frequency, the likelihood, or you can alter the impact. There are some risks that you assume that you need to share with other competition, or you need to share with a third party. Just like a problem shared is halfway solved, so also sharing the risk with another party or parties, including insurance and other mechanisms, could be an effective risk treatment. Now, for instance, someone that just bought a new car, there is a risk of accident. So what does he do? He takes up an insurance policy. So if there's an accident, he has shared the risk. Instead of him paying for the cost of replacement or the cost of repair 100%, the insurance company bears a proportion of that loss while the insured also bears a proportion. So the risk has been shared. So also, you, 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 in terms of your IT infrastructure, you can actually have a disaster recovery as a service. Instead of you having a full alternate site with facilities uh, and infrastructure and spending all your resources, you can do a co-location, share it with other people with similar interests. So a risk can be shared. A problem share is halfway solved. So don't forget that. This may just be the time for you to share the risk. And our final risk treatment option is to retain the risk. Retaining the risk by informed decision. This is critical when it is about risk and benefit. If you don't risk anything, you risk even more. So it, 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 there are times you would need to retain the risk because the cost of avoiding the risk or the cost of modifying the risk is greater than the risk itself. It, 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 it's, it's like it's like for it's like for instance, you need to address a situation, and if that situation, you need to employ an external party that would bill you about fifty thousand dollars for you to for for that issue to be addressed. And meanwhile, if that issue continues, it will only cost you maybe a dollar, a dollar a year. So basically, the cost of trying to solve the problem is greater than the problem itself. So there are risks that you need to retain because you can easily absorb them. It is not everything that you insure. It is not every risk that you transfer. So you need to consider those risks that are within your risk appetite. It's very important you know your risk profile. It's important you know your risk appetite. It's important you know your Inherent risk, inherent risk is also important to know your residual risk. So when you know the know these factors, you can decide which risk to retain in your portfolio. You can decide which risk to avoid. You can decide which risk to transfer. You can decide which risk to actually modify the likelihood or to modify the impact. So basically, it's about knowing your risk profile and knowing your resources. So retaining the risk is based on informed decision after your risk identification and risk assessment has been done. Now we have what we call negative consequences. Risk treatment that deal with, with negative consequences are sometimes referred to as risk mitigation, risk elimination, risk prevention, or risk reduction. Now, risk is the effect of uncertainty on objective. Those uncertainties can either be positive or negative. So it, the risk can either be a negative consequence or a positive consequence. Imagine having 
a, a positive uh, uh, exchange rate that affects your balance sheet. That is a positive risk. Or imagine having an economic uh, uh, economic policy that improves your business growth or your business profit profitability. That is a positive risk. So, but the negative consequences of the risk you need to mitigate or you need to prevent or you need to reduce. So you need to know which which triangle or which spectrum the risk you envisage first into. Does it have negative consequences or does it have positive consequences? In conclusion, as a risk manager, you must decide which of these risk treatment options to implement. So the risk can be acceptable or within the desired threshold. What we are saying is simple. You need to make a risk decision. Every risk you've identified needs to be treated. At time is a combination of this treatment, transfer and altering the impact, risk sharing and avoiding the risk, it can be any combination of these. So as a risk manager, as a risk officer, do you know the risk that your company is faced with, that your organization is faced with? So you need to decide. I'll come back to you. So at this time, do we have any questions? Uh, thank you very much, sir, for an informative webinar. Uh, initially, I would like to apologize for any technical problems if they are cured. Uh, additionally, I want to inform you that PCB provides training and certification services for ISO 31000 Introduction, Foundation, Lead Implementer, and Lead Auditor. A PCB certificate will demonstrate your dedication in implementing and managing risk management processes and frameworks, and most importantly, you will be recognized worldwide. Examined certification fees are included in the training price and participation certificate of CPDs will be issued to participants. If you are interested in more details of, or if you have any questions or need further assistance, please feel free to contact customer at PCB. Uh, now we will start uh, answering some of the questions. Um, the first question is, is it necessary to do another type of risk analysis after completing uh, a five why root cause analysis? If so, why? Okay, I, I didn't get that question. Yes, I will repeat it. Is it necessary to do another type of risk analysis after completing a five why root cause analysis? Okay, um, it, it, it depends on the, what, uh, what you are trying to actually achieve your, your objective, your objective of the analysis. Now, there are different kind of uh, risk analysis options. So if, if you've done a particular one and you are not satisfied with the outcome, you can use a different risk analysis option. So the, 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 approaches, the approaches used for your risk analysis should depend on the objective which you want to achieve. Now, there are some that are very straightforward. There are some that are very uh, complicated. For instance, if you are doing a bow tie analysis, the, 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 uh, you are doing a, a fish bone analysis, or you are doing a, a, a delphi analysis. So the, the options are different depending on the objective which you want to achieve. So if you have used uh, uh, a particular format or a particular approach and you achieve all your objective, then you don't need to do another one. Thank you for How that your question. Yes, thank you for your answer. The second question is option three and four are more or less the same. Do you agree? Okay, option three and four. Option three and four, well uh, one deals with uh, the likelihood, the other one deals with uh, the impact. They 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 are, they are different side of the same coin. Why one is focused on the frequency? How often does it occur? The other one is focused on the impact. So if you treat the frequency, it also affects the impact. So there are different different sides of a coin. One is focused on how often it occurs. 
You don't want to focus on the severity, the cost of frequency. For, for instance, uh, if there is rainfall every day for a week, so you have several times the rain has fallen in that week, the question is what is the impact of that rainfall? So if everywhere was flooded because it was rainfall every day, you, if you are able to reduce the rain falling to two days in a week, the impact will also reduce. The flood level will also reduce. So you are working on both sides. When you work on the frequency, which is the likelihood, you also, at the end of the day, also alter the impact. So you are working from both ends of, uh, of the road. Thank you again for, for the answer. We will now... Um... We will now see the last question for today because of the time limitations. We don't have uh, many much time left. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between risk mitigation and risk reduction? Uh, uh, as we said, negative consequences, you can either do a risk uh, prevention, risk mitigation, or risk reduction. Now, to mitigate is actually to prevent most of the time. When you mitigate against something, you prevent it from happening. But in terms of reduction, the, you, you, are, you are bringing down the level, the level of the risk to an acceptable one. So it, it, some textbook, you don't differentiate that risk mitigation or risk reduction, they are the same thing. Actually, in a broader sense, when, if you mitigate a risk, you actually reduces the risk. So in, in, in terms of usage, if they are similar technologies, they go so much different. Thank you very much, sir, for all your answers. Uh, thank you again for all the webinar, and thanks to everyone who attended this webinar. We appreciate you appreciate you being here. I want to inform you that this webinar is also recorded and can be found in our website and in our YouTube channel. We will also send you the link of the webinar in your email in the upcoming days. Don't forget to check back on our upcoming webinars on the topics of your interest by visiting our website pcb.com. Thanks again for joining us today and we will see you next time the same day at the same time. Thank you Monday for a great presentation. Thank you very much and do have a great time.